Hey folks, we are going to have a little discussion about this morning's story about satellites potentially interfering with the magnetic field. Uh, I've spent a good bit of today thinking about this and I've read a lot of your comments and some of them are pretty on point. I just wanna go over some of the basics. Um, the first question is, could this really be a thing? And the answer is yes. Um, there are a lot of things that can actually affect the entire planet's magnetic field that we wouldn't necessarily normally think about. So, for example, one of those is generating electricity. When we use wind power, water flow, or steam to spin a turbine, it is spinning magnets inside of Earth's magnetic field, and it is generating electricity that way. We're actually stealing from the planet's electrodynamic system there. Uh, and that does affect the magnetic field, although to a very minute degree. If you go and you actually read this paper, they do a pretty good job discussing how uh, some of the charged particles could be captured uh, and how the electrodynamics could be disrupted up at the top of the atmosphere uh, and into the ionosphere and, and the magnetospheric level. And I don't see any issues with the science. Um, where we really come down to it is exactly how big of an impact could this actually be having? And could this be subtly the start of pushing a different kind of agenda on the very real topic of Earth's weakening magnetic field. And so what kind of agenda would they be wanting to push for this? Well, obviously the number one guy putting satellites up right now is Elon Musk. And it's pretty obvious they're not too happy with Elon Musk at the moment. And so this agenda could be, hey, Elon Musk is hurting the magnetic field. It's possible. We don't see any evidence of that coming, uh, coming through just yet, but it's something to keep in, in the back of our minds. The other thing that pops into my head is that, oh, they're going to try to blame humans in general for the drop in Earth's magnetic field. Now, that's kind of along the same lines as them blaming humans for climate change, when that's really the impact of the sun and the impact of the weakening magnetic field. Uh, of course, the magnetic field began weakening much before we put anything up in space. Uh, again, there's this cycle uh, going back time and time again where we didn't have things up in space. And so um, it would be a false premise, but it's at least in my head, they could be using this to once again try to blame humans. And don't forget, anytime they can blame us or get us to blame humans, it's a win for them, as long as we don't recognize the natural changes that are ongoing. The other thing I was thinking is that they're trying to um, overall hide this cycle and hide what's going on and the severity of it. Because if people just begin to think, oh, this is something we are doing, not only could they find a way to make money off of that, but also it keeps people distracted away from just what's going to happen on this planet. And I would think that that's a pretty big deal. Um, on that note, the article is discussing humans impacting the ionosphere. Um, and in theory, yes, but like an ant, a single ant changes the makeup of a mountain. Um, one of the things, I mean, I know recently we've been talking about unexpected solar storms, uh, excess auroral activity, but one of the things from the past couple of years that we've been talking about is the sustained ionospheric disruption, despite the fact that the sun is not putting out what it put out two decades ago, three decades ago, four decades ago, and yet the ionosphere is similarly perturbed. Why is that? If the sun's not delivering those disrupting forces in the same way, well, because the sun has an easier shot now with Earth's magnetic field weakening. And so this idea, oh, humans are can affect the magnetosphere and the ionosphere could be a bit of a misdirection for some of the data that they really can't hide forever. Um, another thing they mentioned in this article, and if you go and read it, you'll see this, they're saying that creating more dust from the satellites coming in, burning up, basically vaporizing down into dust is a major part of the problem because energetic particles will stick to that dust and that will help to diminish Earth's electromagnetic uh, system and could be affecting the magnetosphere. Again, this is a tiny, tiny little thing. I'm not saying it's scientifically or mathematically invalid, but we're talking again about an ant versus a mountain. And so this gets me to thinking, if dust is a problem and dust, I mean, I see how a lot of dust spread across the entire magnetic field, 
could actually have a significant impact. Not this satellite thing they're talking about. But if dust is the problem, what if the dust that has been coming with the galactic magnetic reversal, with the galactic current sheet, is actually what is helping to drive along this electromagnetic change throughout our entire solar system? Don't forget, Earth has about 55% more dust in its atmosphere than it did about a century ago about maybe two or 3% of that could be from extra dust lifted off the Sahara. We've got extra dust in the corona, in the F corona, the uppermost portion. We've got extra dust in the uh, interplanetary space. And we just saw a couple of weeks ago, uh, not that long ago at all, a story about there being even more than expected dust out past Pluto. There's more dust throughout the entire solar system. It is coming with the galactic current sheet being swept up like a giant electrostatic uh, Swiffer duster in space. Now, I have always been of the mindset that, okay, well, as the sheet starts to hit us, the electromagnetic particles of the sheet begin to hit us. We're getting very close to the galactic magnetic reversal point. That's why there is years, decades, more than a century of lead up time as we see the magnetic field begin to decrease, the magnetic poles begin to shift. And that was the whole reason. But another reason or a contributing factor could be this dust. That's something I had never actually thought of before. The idea that, and this paper is absolutely correct about the dust capturing those charged particles and being able to affect the electromagnetic system. What if the dust that is coming with the current sheet is actually the thing that is causing all of these electromagnetic effects, including those here on Earth with the magnetic field changing, in the lead up to the actual galactic magnetic reversal point, which is in the dead center of the galactic current sheet. So anyway, lots to process here. The paper is not super complex. It's not super simple either. Um, is it real? Probably, but to a tiny little degree. Um, is this going to be pushed more and more as some kind of agenda to hurt Elon Musk, to blame humans? Um, and the most, valid, the most valid point about this is the fact that dust actually does this. Um, until I read it in this paper, I had never put those two things together. I wonder how much of what we are seeing here on Earth, on the sun, all in the other planets, is due to the dust coming in and changing the electrodynamic system of our solar system versus the fact that we are approaching the galactic magnetic reversal point. Anyway, hope this was helpful or at least informative in some way. I will see you in the morning for the daily show. Be safe, everyone.